Welcome everyone to today's video. To vary the content of my channel, I wanted to come back to this GCC stuff we have done earlier with a regular Linux GCC to compile DOS COM executables. And while I fully understand that not everyone is interested in this DOS vintage stuff, you can still learn a lot about hardware programming and such, how even modern systems work and C and low level code works. So to complete this DOS stuff, so we have already some demos like fancy colorful stuff and fast VGA blitting and such. To be able to write even more fancy utilities, demos and games and such, I also wanted more support and later more, but that is for another video. So to get this mouse stuff working, there is a interrupt 33, additionally to the interrupt 10 for the video BIOS and interrupt 21 for DOS function calls. We need to call into this functions and we will only use this function zero mouse reset as well as we actually mostly need the swap interrupt subroutines. It's a little bit of a pity that all this DOS stuff is usually doing their own stuff so we cannot reuse what we have here already. We have already set and get interrupt vector so we need to write new assembly code because this is slightly different for just this function. So we will need init that is here, mouse init function zero, just call into there and get the status if this is successful. Then the swap interrupt vector, we need this to get called back if the mouse changes the position or mouse buttons. To do this, you simply need to look up for these functions, you need to look up in the documentation what values you need to call in there. So we need the function number 14 and our far pointer, this old fashioned remote annoying stuff that you can look up in the earlier videos also and the interrupt mask for actions that we are interested in. We shuffle our far pointer around here into the respective registers, call the interrupt, load the return far pointer. This is swap because it returns the old function pointer that we are supposed to restore. So we need to return this to store it also for later resetting it. And this is what I mean. You can also learn GCC assembler template stuff with these videos because if you do similar stuff in other Unix systems like Linux, you have similar assembler, you have similar assembly template stuff also when you use custom assembly for vector instructions and such. So you can still learn quite a lot even when you're not interested in DOS. By the way, the nice background noise is a little bit thunderstorm and drawing going on here. I hope you don't mind. And so that's basically that and we may later move this function to some generic header as we usually have done for the other files. This is our regular main function stuff here. Just some printfs to print what we are doing and for this we actually initialize SVGA mode and because unlike Amigas and other fancy graphic machines from the time that already had hardware sprites we do not have such a luxury even in SVGA cards. So we need to draw the mouse cursor ourselves, which is what we do here. I will explain this in a second. In an Amiga, we could just program the hardware sprites and have the hardware draw our mouse cursor. But on the PC side, only later GUI accelerators from the Windows and AutoCAD and such came along. In one of the next videos, we could also do this and program hardware cursor on one of those more fancier accelerators, but all the classic VGA cards don't have this. So here we call, this is SVGA stuff. Our mouse stuff is here, mouse init. Fail if we can't do this. And actually we need to set the maximum because we're using some SVGA mode. So to get something more than VGA coordinates, we need to set the maximum. Then we swap the interrupt service routine here to our one that is here ISR mouse. I documented here we get the register values here for the position and buttons and such. We need to save those away. And then we simply do a loop to save a little bit load also in virtual machines. I use here the hold instruction that holds until an interrupt occurs. And this could also be timer interrupt and such. So I actually check if this is an update to the mouse coordinate and only then draw the mouse cursor ourselves here until a key press and then we restore the text mode and swap the original mouse interrupt service routine back and that's it. Let's show you this in action. 
So we can move a medium fancy mouse cursor here. And actually, so this is just some random memory that was in the video memory. I don't clear it here. This is our own blitting here of the coordinates. And actually the mouse cursor, you see it's a little bit transparent and such. So the reason for this, as we draw the mouse cursor ourselves, we are overwriting video memory. So normally we would need to save the area below our mouse cursor and restore it when we move the mouse. But I'm not really feeling like allocating memory and copying out this data. In a real game or demo, you would know your own game of demo graphics anyway and you could restore it yourself. So I did not want to artificially program here this code that I would later not need. So for this, I make use of manipulating the graphics so that we can restore it. And I do this by XORing this here, XOR, you see this here, set this pixel to what we had x or our mouse cursor. You could also use subtract and add or something, but x or is often used for things like this. If you've never heard about this logic operation x or, you could Google this logic operations like or and and x or and uh, get some understanding of this bit based operations. One more thing I wanted to say, remember in an earlier video about this naked attributes that we used, and they said here, while using extended assembly or a mixture of basic ASM and C code may appear to work, they cannot be dependent upon to work reliably and are not supported. And well, here today I found out what that actually means. As we established using this naked attribute here for these functions, this function would actually not work and it took me quite some while to debug this. And the reason for this is actually pretty simple do too much in this routine and I had here earlier this direct print of this mouse values and maybe for this we do not initialize uh, SVGA mode and do not draw the cursor. Let's see what happens. Here maybe not so much. Oh, because we also program the duck here. So Okay, now the ISR works as expected. Let's see if this was before not the case, what I wanted to show. Yeah, as you see, um, not much is happening except this uh, hanging and actually cannot even quit the program now. And the reason for this is, this are the details that take you quite a while to debug. Let's enable here this in 3 to debug this and show you what is happening there. Notice that our interrupt handler is here in 3, then this push A and so on, this is our data segment, and then pop the data segment, pop A and return. Ah, actually, by the way, this is also this is a function return. This is for the, this is not the real interrupt vector. Also took me quite a while to figure out. But the real problem, so remember this is our function prologue and this is our function epilogue. And this is the content of this interrupt vector. Let's see, not run our program and manually go to C, subject here and debug mouse. So we have here our debugger. Again, for details, you want to see the previous videos. So we want to breakpoint on int3 and run the program and this should be yeah. so we hit our interrupt 3 and the problem is when we step you through and look carefully I hope single stepping works today sometimes it arrows out and steps over multiple instructions but here's our int3 and notice our stack pointer. The stack pointer is here is FF92. And this is what we need to reach again when we leave our function to properly restore here the same data segment and registers. So this is exactly what we programmed here. Push A and so on, move, push A and so on. And then comes here the code for the printf. So let's step. 
push AD and there, okay, this was already too much. The joy of single stepping in DOSBox. So again, we just can't single step. I have no idea why this doesn't work reliably on DOSBox. Let me show you like this. So if we would single step, we would push this. We would push all the regular registers, push the data segment, restore the data segment. So, and this is, uh, you see here, C, D, A, X. These are our values that we expect from the mouse driver and store them here to data segment, just like we programmed here. This out to out register C, D and A to M, X, M, Y and C. And this code here is to establish the arguments for the call to printf. After this comes our code for the data segment restoring and the regular registers. The problem is that if we would be able to single step what we can't, currently can't, we would see that the stack pointer is not being established as ff92 anymore because our function call here is pushing values like ax, dx and such and um, calling here the function and because normally GCC would restore the stack at the end of the function, however we intentionally instructed GCC that this is a naked function and we don't want this. So this is why this doesn't work. So to work around this limitation I call here another function without arguments as simple as possible and do as little as possible there. And normally GCC would inline this. So normally this would result in exactly the same code as GCC is intelligent enough to realize we only call it once and inline it. So I additionally use here this attribute no inline to prevent GCC from inlining this. So by doing this we force GCC to do all this stack preparation for the functions and restore independently of our naked function and we need to keep in mind to keep our naked interrupt returns as simple as possible to, to help GCC that additional function epilogue stuff is not required. Of course this is still subject to optimizations and compiler versions and such so using this naked attribute for interrupt service routines like this is still a little bit undefined or implementation defined. So if we compile this again and take a look what we got. Of course we could also look on the assembly output. This way we can demonstrate it directly. Now we see that we have here a function call without additional stack stuff. And now this will work again because let's see if we can step through this. Um, maybe we couldn't. Why can we never do this? Um, somehow can't. A pity. But um, you get the idea that now this, you can always manually count this through. This is pushing to the stack, this is pushing to the stack. This is not, this is just writing to the data segment. Then we call here. Of course, this call needs to establish the same stack layout again. And then here it directly is our own manually function return epilogue that we have done manually there. So yeah, <clears throat> so, so much to relying on implementation defined stuff. Yeah, now this works without crashing. So don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.